Hi, my name is Simon Howard and I'm a Solutions Architect at Microfocus. So this video is a quick overview of Fortify On Demand. Fortify On Demand is our cloud offering that enables you to find vulnerabilities in your applications. So to use Fortify On Demand you have to log on to your tenant. So I'm going to log on to a demo tenant. So here we are, I'm now logging in. I'm going to get taken to the view I was last at when I was logged in. And that's called the dashboard view. And this shows me a set of tiles that show me quickly the status of my application. So for example, I know right now of my 119 applications, nearly 17,000 of them have critical level issues, which is pretty high, right? Uh, and issues are categorized across four buckets, critical high, medium and low, or sometimes we call them criticality levels. Um, there is another view called the administration uh, view. I'm not going to look at that right now. You have the permission to do that. That's in a more detailed uh, overview and demo video. We're going to look at the applications view. And in this view, we can see a status of all the applications that we have on this tenant. And I'm just going to look at one of them to look at some of the key features that FOD offers. So we're looking at the WG application and we're looking at a version, all the versions that are available for it or the tenant knows about. And I'm going to look at the results of one of those versions, version 2.0. So we'll drill down further now into the results. There are several different views as you can see. So in this view, the release issues view, I can see an overview of the vulnerabilities. I know, for example, there are 22 SQL injections. These are the critical level issues for this scan. I can see an overview of each vulnerability. So we'll select this one here, which is a SQL injection. I can see a description of the vulnerability, what it means. And this view here is designed for whatever experience level you have. I would simply look at this when I'm triaging the vulnerability, understand more about where it fits into my code, look at some code snippets to understand you know, what a SQL injection looks like in Java in this particular case. These little snippets are in the language that was scanned. Maybe I might reference out to other documentation if I need to, for OWASP for example. I'll go look straight at my code and understand well, how does it relate to that. So this here is the data and call flow history leading up to the vulnerability. I can go straight to where it occurs here in a query that's executed here. And what I would typically do is work backwards through time right to the start in line with my code to see where it occurs. Uh, right, I might be thinking now, yep, I can see this is a, a SQL injection, but I can't quite understand the structure of how the code flows. I could go to the diagram view and see that in this lovely little diagram here. And then I might think, well, actually it does all very well, but I don't know what to do. How do I fix a SQL injection in this case? I can go to the recommendations tab and I can see guidance on how you typically fix a SQL injection. So here it's saying you could typically use parameterized SQL statements. And these snippets again are in the language that was scanned. I would work through this, get some tips. I could, if I need to, even use interactive training if I've licensed that. Look out to references that apply and so on. So having decided that this is a real vulnerability, what I can do is actually assign this to somebody else. You can see it's actually already assigned to me, but I could assign it to somebody else. Uh, Vince Data, for example. I would go through the process here in, com in combination with the uh, member in the security team which is responsible for this. I would make the changes, they would approve those changes, and so on. But what you're more likely going to do is actually submit a bug. Now this particular application is not linked in with the bug tracker, but if it was, I could click this button here and I could go and raise a ticket for this vulnerability or indeed other vulnerabilities as well in one go. Okay, so that's a process that you would follow when you're triaging the results of a scan. You do that multiple times for the results that are available. Now you can also, I'll go back to the applications view, perform dynamic assessments on applications too as well. These are web applications, whether it be a website or web services or web APIs, for example, that you use. So let's go look at one of those. I'm going to use a filter to drill down a bit further. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to look at this application here, another one, webgoat.java. And I go and click on that to go and drill down into the results. And now I have a similar view to what I had before for my static analysis. The difference being there's no code displayed. I'm just going to look now at the, the HTTP traffic. In fact, that's what was tracked when the vulnerability was found. So there are three vulnerabilities of a privacy violation nature. doesn't matter exactly what they are for the purpose of this video. But the key thing to know 
is that Fortify captures the HTTP traffic as vulnerabilities occur, and in fact, as the scan, the dynamic assessment is being performed. And what a dynamic assessment does is essentially attack your application in the same way that an attacker would do. And what is picked up here, and if we go look at the vulnerability tab just for a second, it's telling me that there's some user information, in this case, in a cookie. And I go look at the traffic. You can see that there is some user information and that's, that's suspicious. And then we could look at the recommendations tab to tell me typically what I would do in order to fix this. Not very exciting in this case, basically saying to me, don't do it. Okay, so that's basically what you do in order to triage dynamic vulnerabilities that are being found. And finally, I'm going to talk about what, what you do at the end of this. And this is very much a simple overview. So basically, you might typically generate a report and that port might be for your team. Just downloaded it. And then we're going to open it up. And here it is. This is a result of a dynamic scan, the very same one we the application we looked at, webgoat.java. And you can see here this, an overview of the status of the application in terms of vulnerabilities, a breakdown, and so on. The important thing to know is reports can be as detailed as you want them to be, high level exec overview, even all the way down to developer level detail. And you can also create your own custom templates. Okay, that's it. That's the end of this very quick overview of 45 Demand. See you in the next video.